we do like our funny stories here on Rave It Up. Okay. So we'd love to know, has there been any embarrassing moments or major mistakes made throughout your career? Yeah, I can think of a couple straight off the bat. Um, oh, one was... Quick. A- he had it prepared. <laughs> <laughs> one was actually um, on cruise ships. So um, here's a bit of an industry secret, but um, the first show that you do when you get out on to the ship basically they record the voices of the four lead vocalists um and then each of those recordings is held on a separate um uh file and it's what's called your sick track okay and it's really rare that this would ever happen but in fact across four years i only ever had to use it once but if you physically can't sing i mean it's quite different in uh, australia and in music theater shows because these days you know and uh, traditionally, you would have uh, someone called a swing who could step in to do what you do. Mm, um, kind of like an understudy. Yeah, yeah. exactly right. <laughs> so if if you're sick, um, they do your job and you stay at home. But on Can't ships... Can't do that on ships. No, yeah. there were four singers. They need to fix that. <laughs> there were eight dancers and we all had to do our job. I mean, there were obviously moments where like we had a dancer with, you know... Uh, a busted hip or whatever they wouldn't have to do the show we'd re-block so that there were fewer dancers on stage and make it work um but across four years i was lucky in that i was able to do my show every time um but on one contract i got glandular fever oh um and it sort of went misdiagnosed and i just kept getting chest infections i was really quite crook and this one i was sleeping about 17 18 hours a day <clears throat> and so for the only time in the four years that I was out there, I said, I need to use my sick track. And I was so tired and I was so sick. And we're doing a song from West Side Story. There's a place for us, somewhere a place for us, right? And- He's a good singer, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm there and I'm facing this pretty girl I'm singing, singing opposite. And I'm miming. And the song's coming sick out anyway, because yeah. it's my sick track. It's my voice, but... And I'm just so embarrassed. I just want this show to be over so I can go back to bed and whatever. Because you're feeling really cruel, right? Yeah, yeah, so sick. And so the song starts, and I'm looking at her, and I go, there's a place for us. And that's going out of the... And then I... My, my choreography then took me away from her to, like, show her the brave new world, whatever. Like, <laughs> look out over this way, right? Out over the audience. But I forgot the words. Oh, God! So the track keeps going and, and the you're track like... kept going and I'm just got this like this <laughs> look in my eyes of like look at all the hope babe like I still did my choreography it's like if you've forgotten the words face the back show the world out there <laughs> did it too sick so it's booming out somewhere a place for us and I'm like so that was embarrassing I actually how also how did you recover from that you didn't I didn't I just I carried on freaking out and being way too sick and you know, mime the rest of the song. But I mean, at that moment, it's embarrassing because you never want to mime, ever. Mm. That's, that's the last thing any singer wants to do. And the only time I've ever done it, essentially, I forgot a lyric, which just then everybody <laughs> in the crowd goes, worse. well, that guy's miming. So they're all miming as well. I was like embarrassed because they would have thought everybody yeah, was miming at that point. Letting down everyone else. Yeah. So that was, that was a gross. Bad show then, yeah. But kind of funny. <laughs> and then the other one I can remember was... Um, on Jersey Boys, uh, I was in this scene. Um, for anyone who's seen the show, will remember this scene. That uh, it's two gangsters in the car, uh, and one shoots the other, and it's all a bit of a ruse to trick young Frankie Valley, who's in the back seat, and get some money out of him. Um, but the gun, uh, we had the basically the curry was it was a real gun. I had to get a gun license to actually use it in the show. Whoa! Is it- it Isn't that, a, like, dangerous having a real gun in a musical? I guess oh my so. Gosh. It's a sort Everyone of a, would think it's just a prop. Yeah, no, I know. But it wasn't. Actually, I've got another story for you in a second, but... but, but <laughs> I love how it's going, coming back to you. <laughs> yeah, but this gun, basically, so... It had been rejiggered so that, like, nothing came out of the end of it. Yeah. It sort of... The round blew out to the side, and then they were always blanks. So no one was in danger, but it mm. made a hell of a loud bang. Um, which was the effect that was required. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So, yeah. But the Cory was, like choreography, but that's what it is. Essentially, (laughs) I had to take the gun out of the holster. I used to go, how about this? And I'd take the gun out of the holster and I'd shoot the guy, right? But we also had Cory 
if the gun didn't go off, which is that there was another gun in the wings and the props lady would point the gun up at the sky, see that my gun didn't go off and my curry was supposed to be bang and then, oh, it didn't work, look at the gun, back and shoot again and the gun in the wings would go off. That's a good good plan, plan B. <laughs> so I joined the show in Sydney and through the whole run in Melbourne, that had never happened. They told me it might happen and that I had to be ready for it but it had never happened. So I'm there thinking, we're good as gold here, not a problem. I've been in the show for two weeks, so I'm still basically a baby in Jersey Boys, and the gun didn't go off. And I was like, oh. Did you forget about the plan B? And I, was? No, I remember the plan B, I looked at the gun again, and the gun in the wings didn't go off. <laughs> so now we're just in a situation, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you had one job, exactly right. I'm not gonna dump her in it, but essentially, it just had to be human error, but whatever. So we're, both of us are stuck out there, me and the other actor who's got blood capsules in his mouth ready to squeeze down, bite down on them and then like... Die. die. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Fake die. Eat, fake die, fake dying. You're an actor who is fake dying, who is fake, fake dying, if that makes sense. But yes. when the gun hasn't gone off twice, I look, I'm like, look, I'll give it one more shot. I'll pull the trigger again. Hopefully she'll pull the trigger again. It'll just make a double loud bang, hopefully. Yep. Nothing happened. And God bless the other actor, but he went he made he went bang and made that noise <laughs> with his mouth and then bit down the blood capsules and died i couldn't believe what was happening in my life at that point did everyone in the crowd laugh at least oh, it became I think, gosh, a funny that, yeah it's, been, a, funny it's a very funny story to retell but the one other story i thought of because you were saying real guns in musicals so i did miss saigon um with a mate of yours Stephen may uh, many years ago <laughs> <laughs> Got to bring him up later. There you go. You're already getting a shout out, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but we had a ton of real guns in that show. Um, all None of them that could fire, but they were all genuine um, Vietnam War rifles. Stunning, stunning guns. And they were all locked up in a gun safe on our production. But apparently in the West End production in London, uh, there'd been this string of robberies um, <laughs> of banks... And as the police looked at the map, they were like, okay, here's where the robberies are taking place. What's in the middle of that? The theater district and the theater where Miss Saigon is currently playing. So anyway, the story goes, and I might have some details wrong here, but the story goes, they came in and one of the um, mechanists, the guys in all black who are um, sort of responsible for running the show, essentially, stage management um, uh, assistants and all that kind of stuff, one of those guys had been taking one of the Miss Saigon guns out and robbing those banks. <gasps> and his locker was full of, like, it had a um, balaclava oh and my all this cash that he'd been stealing from the banks. Unbelievable. Jeez, but true. You, c you can't trust these people. <laughs> mm, that's it. Well, maybe you can't. This guy certainly couldn't be trusted. But How yeah. many years ago was that? Uh, would have been, well, uh, our production of Miss Saigon was 10 years ago, and I reckon it was probably another couple of years before that. Oh, my gosh. Crazy, Jeez. hey? Jeez. I yeah. did not know that. Yeah. It was, was it the same sort of gun that you said was shooting blanks in Jersey Boys? Well, it no, I, they, weren't, they weren't equipped to fire, and he obviously wasn't. If, if someone had said that's not a real gun, he would have been stuck. Yeah. They wouldn't have got any money, but there's nothing quite like holding up. I think it was just more the scare factor. Any yeah. kind of gun's going to work in that scenario. You yeah. Know? They'll, they'll hand over the money. Yeah. They don't want to be shot. That's right. So if <laughs> there are any bank robbers out there listening, um, don't, need don't, inspiration, borrow a gun from Miss Yeah, exactly yeah. right. <laughs> don't try this at home. <laughs> yeah.